Okay, I think we're ready. I think it's 11.15. Uh, um, as I said, welcome everyone. My name is uh, Matthew Elephant. I'm with an organization called Inclusive Web. Uh, we work with organizations for anyone who doesn't know about us. Uh, we do a lot of accessibility training. We work to do uh, accessibility audits. We do something called usability testing. And that's what um, will be kind of a sample of what we're doing today with Chris on the line uh, from Zoom, where uh, we test with uh, people who have lived experiences um, and are native to accessibility um, uh, tool sets. Uh, and then we do uh, some things around accessibility monitoring and, and automated testing. Um, as part of our organization, we do something called an access check. Is everyone familiar with what an access check is? An access check is. Um, uh, something we do just to make sure that uh, everybody uh, has access, if there are any accommodations that need to be met, uh, to understand and learn about my presentation. So if, you know, if somebody uh, was deaf, we would have an ASL interpreter here. Uh, if somebody was, uh, maybe had some cognitive disability, I would slow down the way I speak. Um, and so an access check is just a great thing to do, especially in a large gathering like this, uh, to make sure everybody has uh, access to uh, the presentation. So um, again, and I'll, as, as we do some of this, I'll kind of go through and uh, you know, kind of voice describe uh, some of the actions that are on the slides. Uh, the agenda for today is really kind of you know, four simple things. Uh, before we go into a screen reader demo, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, disability rights. I want to also explain a little bit of who we design for. So in addition to screen readers, what are the other types of disabilities we test for and the assistive technologies associated with them? As I mentioned, I have uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Chris Kachow on the line with us today, uh, and he's going to be doing a screen reader demo. And he's going to go through it in terms of you know, essentially uh, three uh, main topics. One is just to give you a sampling of what a well-structured page looks like and how that interacts <coughs> with a screen reader, why there's such importance around things like alt text and headings and things like that as we start to build context for a user uh, with a visual disability. Uh, we'll kind of do the reverse side of that, so we'll go through some poor examples of what those elements are. And then we'll try to touch upon the subject of overlays. Uh, overlays become a hot topic. Does everyone know what an overlay is? An overlay is essentially, uh, if you go to a website and you'll see like a little bug on it, um, an accessibility bug, and they make claims that with like two lines of JavaScript, they can make your website completely accessible. Uh, we'll disprove that myth very quickly uh, with Chris on the line today uh, and really show you how some of those technologies, unfortunately, actually make the experience much worse uh, for a person with a disability, uh, depending on the type of technologies that they use. Um, and then we'll have kind of a roundup uh, where you know I'm happy to answer uh, any questions. Uh, this is also meant to be interactive, so if you want me to slow down, if you have a question along the way, you know, please speak up. All right. Um, so as I said, I just want to talk a little bit about disability rights. Um, when we talk and we talk about testing, uh, especially for accessibility, there are really kind of two main models, the medical model um, and the social model. Uh, as, uh, as an organization that tests for disabilities, we really try to adhere and embrace uh, the ADA, which is at the heart of the social model, which is that as society, you know, if by us building and building uh, essentially kind of uh, universal design principles, we're making society more of an equal place. So in addition to stairs, that's why you see ramps uh, in buildings versus, you know, the expectation that a person maybe in a wheelchair would, you know, have some mechanical uh, device that would kind of lift them up the steps, right? And so uh, as, as testers or people that are, you know, um, interested in accessibility, um, we always, you know, try to, you know, uh, push the concepts in terms of like, how can we start to build web applications, uh, digital applications, mobile applications that really embrace that social model. Um, just to kind of put this stuff into statistics, um, in New York City where I live, roughly about 11% of the people identify with a disability. Uh, the WHO represents that number to be um, 
uh, much larger in terms of 20%. And again, these are about people who identify uh, in the form of with a, with a disability. I think that number grows to a much larger extent when you think about all the people that rely on assistive technologies. Um, so, you know, my mother is in her 80s. Um, she uses a phone. Uh, on that phone, she has enlarged fonts. And really, those concepts are part of, like, how do we build universal design that's beneficial for everybody? Um, so who are we designing for? So really, when we are testing and we're building for accessibility, there's kind of four main forms of disability that we will test against. Uh, the first one is, obviously, if somebody um, you know, has an auditory disability, so deafness or hard of hearing, uh, essentially for assistive technologies, you know, it's important to make sure that there's captionings uh, for them. We're working on a, a large project um, with a museum and we're making sure that, um, you know, for people who have hearing aids, uh, those hearing aids have connectivity either through um, things like an induction loop or Bluetooth technology. Um, and again, when we're thinking about people with auditory uh, disabilities, it's important to make sure that there's captions, audio, writing in plain text, or even embracing American with sign language in your videos. Uh, people with uh, mobility um, or physical disabilities, again, um, when we're thinking about this, again, these are uh, users who most commonly cannot use a mouse and often use a keyboard. Uh, in some cases, a user uh, with uh, a physical disability might use uh, like a sif and puff device, um, depending on the type of disability that they use. So again, when we think of the assistive technologies there, um, it's a track and ball mouse, a switch control sif and puff devices, or maybe even uh, voice control. Um, again, our recommendations are making sure that you know, you're using keyboard access or accessible labels. Um, people with cognitive disability. Um, so again, anyone with a learning disability, a developmental disability, or intellectual disability. Um, uh, this is becoming a larger area around testing. So people will often do, um, you know, test sites for uh, level of uh, grade level, you know, readability within the website. Um, consistency in terms of navigation. So if you're having forms, making sure that buttons are in the same locations, that if there's a multi-step form, that there's clear markings as to how many steps are within the total process um, you know, of that. Uh, and then lastly, you know, anybody with a, a visual disability, so that's either blindness or low vision. Um, People with low vision don't actually use a screen reader. They actually might magnify um, the screen to a large degree, so 400, 200, or 400 um, percent in terms of magnification. Um, obviously, people uh, also would use a screen reader, and that's where you know making sure uh, your your site is well coded. Um, uh, so again, you know. It also, you know, color contrast is something that we think about when we think about, you know, somebody with a visual disability. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, lastly, all of these things really ladder up to the fact that, you know, disability has a spectrum. Um, and that by, you know, building for, uh, essentially for accessibility, you were really helping people um, within that large spectrum. So not only, you know, permanent disability, but obviously if, you know, if somebody broke their arm and they don't have use of, you know, their arm and they need to use a, a keyboard or, you know, there's obviously situational elements as well. Does that make sense? Anyone want me to go over any of that stuff again? <coughs> What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand this over to Chris. Chris, I'm putting you on the main screen. Welcome. Everyone, welcome Chris. Hi, Chris. Uh, <laughs> uh, Chris is thank one of you, our... Thank you for having me in this pretty best face here today. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, Chris is one of our testers with Inclusive Web and uh, is going to walk us through a screen reader demo. Has anybody uh, seen... Uh, a person with a disability use a screen reader in real life? Okay, 
good, about half the, half the room. So um, maybe you want to just give yourself um, just an overview of what you're going to be walking us through, and, um, and uh, we'll take it from there. Absolutely. Um, so I'm, uh, I myself am completely blind. I also have a bilateral hearing loss, so I wear hearing aids. Um, so I'm not only a native user of screen reader technology, I'm also a direct beneficiary of everything that is technology, everything that is innovation, including, including accessibility, right? Uh, so just, just to give that context, I, I work in accessibility testing as well. So this is kind of uh, really the, the bread and butter. What I want to do today, um, and, and obviously feel free to stop at any point, feel free to ask questions. Uh, you know, growth doesn't happen without asking questions and, and you know, getting further insight. So I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to have folks through the conversation. Uh, however they please. Um, what I want to do is first kind of go through, you know, just a, a basic overview of how screen readers work, just kind of a cursory thing, and uh, I want to start off by showing a, a well-structured page, a, a page that for, for all intents and purposes is accessible, is compliant uh, to the extent possible, uh, just kind of showcasing good accessibility practices. Um, then I'm going to move on to a couple of examples where accessibility can go wrong or accessibility can be lacking. Uh, there are going to be a couple things that are kind of innocuous, right? Maybe some minor annoyances, uh, and then perhaps some some showstoppers. And we can get into also overlays and uh, where that can go wrong as well. So I'm going to share my screen. Let's see here. Uh, do we have audio? Do you, I have yeah, yeah. Can you, can everyone hear that? So, so, um, so what you're hearing right now is essentially the screen reader going through um, uh, Chris's desktop, and that's Chris's normal speed as to which uh, he hears. Uh, for us 20, 20 people, I think you have to slow it down a little bit so we can understand. I'm, I'm 34, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so what we're hearing now, right, uh, it, it's, it's reading the text on the screen, but it's also giving some, some contextual information, right? So, for example, I can hit this key. Okay, so it's, it's saying a couple of different things. It's saying... Uh, mute, which is the button text, right? And it says currently unmuted, and then it says button has focus. Let me go and slow this thing down uh, first. Rate, rate 70, rate 70, rate 60, rate 55. Okay, um, so that's, that's more along the lines of something conversational, I suppose. Um, so uh, let's go just give a basic. Um, Example here. Mozilla Fire. Rub dialog. Text on available folder untitled. Notepad. Text editor. This is basic. Blank. Right. Text editor. Restore on the untitled. Notepad. I, I maximized the, the window and it went to the menu. I pressed alt space to get to that and then pressed X for maximize. So there, there are a number of kind of accelerators that, that can be kind of employed here uh, to I, I, you know to circumvent the kind of efficiency gaps that, that come from, you know, not using a mouse and being able to just kind of glance around and click and click. Uh, so let's just type something really quickly. This, it, a, teach space, a, a, test. This is a test. So, you know, as I'm typing, right, uh, and, and now this is highly configurable, um, as I'm typing, every time I hit space, it's telling me the word I type. Uh, again, you, you can, it's, it's highly configurable, you can change uh, the parameters in, in terms of having to give you feedback for every letter you type, every character, um, or, or nothing at all, or every line. So you have a lot of kind of variability in terms of what you, you can choose to, to have exposed to you at, at a given time. Uh, just to give you uh, an overview, 
So this is basically a giant edit field, right? So we can mm. you can use navigation commands, uh, either the arrow keys or things like the number pad, right? So I'm just moving from left to right. T H I S. Uh, you might notice that the letter T has a, a higher pitch to it that conveys that the, the letter is capitalized. Okay. Um, with that out of the way, let's get into the web just, just a bit. Uh, I, I hopefully that, that gives um, uh, a decent overview for folks who, who might benefit from it. Uh, let's close out of here. I'm going to press Alt F4. That was great. Thank you, Chris. Okay, I'm I'm sorry, say it again? I said that was great. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Mozilla Firefox private browsing. Yeah. So, uh, it says Mozilla Fire Firefox private browsing. I can press insert T. Mozilla Firefox private browsing. To uh, to get the window title, which is just a good way to orient yourself. That's why it's, 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 it's also useful to have um, <clears throat> these uh, meaningful page titles on your, on your websites. So let's go to, let's say healthcare.gov, right? Tis, tis the season. Healthcare. Open enrollment and whatnot. Let's. Gov. Collapsed. Busy. Private window. Firefox clears your search and browse. So I just press control to silence the speech. This is an email subscription dialog that can be closed. Clickable button, close subscription. Okay, so it's giving me immediately, right? It's giving me the, the, the kind of directive that this is an email subscription dialog that can be closed. Uh, so this appears, uh, at least from my vantage point, to be a kind of modal dialog. It's um, it's grabbed the focus. I believe I'm on the close button here. Button close subscription. Right. So there's a close button here. Button close. There's no. Um, oftentimes, the email analysts are mildly problematic or, or very problematic. Um, you'll have situations. I, I don't you know if folks have heard the term like focus traps or keyboard traps. It's essentially where there's ambiguity around how to dismiss the dialogue uh, or or even just move your focus away from it. Uh, there's not an explicit close button. You can't really tab away from it, things of that nature. So this is a really good implementation right off the bat. Um, it grabs your attention, literally grabs your focus, uh, brings uh, brings the focus of your screen reader to that dialog. So let's press the down arrow here to just read in a granular way. Let's assume that we don't know the layout of the page or the structure, which is often the case for, for folks who are on a page for the first time. Heading level two, get cover for 2024. Start here. Okay, so heading level two, this this signifies that this is kind of the beginning of some, some content, right? Headings are really important. Proper semantic markup uh, is probably one of the most important uh, aspects of, of accessibility when, when you talk about us radio technology and so on. So let's read down. Sign up to get important reminders about open enrollment and learn more about your 2024 coverage. Options. Enter email address. Edit required invalid entry as auto-complete email address. Okay, so that's a mouthful, right? The whole kind of thing of picture being a thousand words. Um, so it's, it's telling me I'm on this edit field. It's telling me it's required. It's, it's telling me that it, the, there's invalid input because there's, there's nothing there, right? And, and it's, it's telling me that the, the label is for the email address. Lots of information. Um, Real quickly, I think one of the most important yeah, things, yeah. Chris, it, 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 as we're going through this, you know, I think it's important, especially you know, for a lot of people with 2020 vision, they don't realize that all of this builds context for what the page is. So when Chris goes to the home page, right, of, of healthcare.gov, he has no context for what's in front of him. And for him to build that context, just like when we're able to open and we're able to see it, he's going through this semantic structure of the where the focus is on the page, where the H2s are, what's the instructions around that, to kind of build a visual map in his head around where these fields are and what he has to do and what this essentially this website's about. Sorry, go ahead, Chris. Sure. So you know, it, it took to pretty much at this point to know that we're going to form, right? So you're you're building that context, you're building the your your kind of visual concept of the page hierarchy and, and what's here. It's not just a giant you know stream of text or anything. It's not prose. Uh, there's there's interactive elements here. Uh, one other thing, 
that I, I want to demonstrate here is, is the use of sounds to kind of convey information. So if I press enter to invoke this edit field, Enter email address edit required invalid entry as auto complete email address email address blank. Okay, so that's a lot. So we, we heard this clicking noise. That signifies that the screen editor has entered what's called focus mode. So that essentially means that it gives the, it, it confines, it restricts the focus and the navigation to the currently visible control, which in this case is the edit field. So you can go and uh, you can use the arrow keys and things of that nature, you know, kind of navigation commands, and it will be interacting directly with that text field and not the rest of the page. Um, I'm going to press escape here, and you'll hear another sound. That signifies that the screen reader has entered browse mode again, which is the, the quote unquote normal mode that folks use to go and, and get kind of the overall view of the, the page at large. So I'm Again, as I, I pointed out before, there are a couple of things that folks can do. Um, can use screen readers to kind of speed things along, right? Uh, now, another reason why semantic structure and proper markup is so important is because of this kind of efficiency gain that we get right here. So I know that the first thing I encountered in this dialogue is, is, is the close button. So I can press Shift B to get to the previous occurrence of a button. Uh, so I wouldn't have to arrow up through the text or anything like that, or press shift tab. So let me do that right now. Clickable close subscription dialog button. So it lands me right on that button. Um, so B and shift B will go to the next and previous occurrence of a button, uh, respectively. And, and there are a variety of, of similar kind of accelerators that can be used, you know, for example, H for heading, G for graphic, and so on. And that's pretty, uh, that's pretty platform agnostic, uh, depending on which screen reader you use, uh, whether it's NVDA, which is what I'm using right now, under Windows, or JAWS, which is the, the competitor, or, um, you know, of course, VoiceOver on the Mac. It's, it's all pretty much the same paradigm. So I'm going to press space to invoke this close button. But open enrollment this year. Add by deck 15 for coverage starting Jan 1 healthcare.gov. Mozilla Firefox private right, I'm just going to press control to silence the speech once again. I'm going to press uh, control home to get to the top. An official website of the United States government. Okay. And again, just going to move down. Button collapsed. Here's how you know. Okay, so it says button collapsed. Here's how you know. So that's, that's pretty useful information that, that at least implies, uh, assuming that the, the website has been coded correctly, that um, there will be some content rendered below if, if you were to invoke this button and expand it. So let's let's give that a shot and press space. Expand it. Expand it. Okay. So, right, now that we've invoked this button, we're getting feedback that the, uh, the content has been expanded, so let's proceed down. Official website news.gov. Okay. A .gov website belongs to an official government organization in the United States. Secure .gov websites use HTTP. Okay, that's fine. Um, let's press Shift B again to get to this uh, button. Here's how you know button expanded. Okay, let's. We should hopefully be able to uh, to activate it again to collapse it. Collapsed. And there we go. We've gotten the feedback that's collapsed. Out of the region global banner. And, and we've also gotten confirmation because we've, we've gone down and the, the content that we were reading is no longer there. Link skip to main content. Skip to main content. All right. Um, that is an incredibly valuable asset. Skip links are great for, for not only for screen reader users, but folks who, for, for any number of reasons, must use a keyboard only. It, it really... Uh, represents kind of a boost in efficiency and in terms of being able to, to navigate. Does it, everybody know what a skip link is? Yeah. Of the profile applications and coverage navigation landmark list with two items link to the auto salad.gov and Espanol. Okay, so it's trying to read Spanish text as English. That's um, partially my fault. I turned off dialect switching. Uh, ordinarily, it will attempt to switch languages and read the, uh, the foreign language, but I just found this to be a little bit jarring. So um, it's also giving us information about landmarks, which are um, 
Other kind of navigation elements that screen reader users can 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 have at their disposal to kind of further divide up the page. It's telling me that uh, there's a list. Link login. Yeah. So again, login link. I the list navigation landmark yeah. link get coverage. Another navigation landmark is link get coverage. Link keeper update your plan. Button collapse see topics. Okay, so we have another one of those kind of accordion, collapsible, expandable controls, see topics, right? Um, so again, just to further cement the point about these these navigation uh, keyboard shortcuts, you can use, for example, K and Shift K to skip and, and navigate only among the links, right? So perhaps you might already have the context that you need for the page, but you know that you're looking whatever you're looking for, or whatever the destination is, probably um, probably reach, reachable by a link. So you can go and navigate simply by a link and skip all the buttons and, and other kind of text. Maybe there's a bunch of other form controls. So you can use K and Shift K to move to the next to the previous link, respectively. Get answers link, make landmark take the first step to apply link. So all of these links, right, have, all the links that we've seen so far have meaningful text. And, and this is especially important because it really kind of mitigates the need to have broader context. And again, I'm, I'm really about efficiency, especially since I've had to to slow down even my speed rate for, for a variety of reasons, just given the hearing loss and so on. Um, the less you're able, the less you're, you're kind of forced to listen to uh, while kind of preserving the, the integrity of the information you need better, right? So if, if you're you're able to properly convey the information in in fewer syllables, as I'm clearly failing to do right now, uh, the, the the better your efficiency. Yeah. And, uh, Chris, do to you kind wanna... of tie that together? Oh, sorry, go ahead. You can have a, if if you have uh, inline links that or, or things that say click here, or links that have the title just the title text that click here. It, it doesn't really lend itself well to navigating using this paradigm because you have no idea as to the destination for, for your link. Let's take a pause. Let's take a pause real quick. Why don't we navigate now to an example of a site that doesn't have such well structure, good structure, um, and kind of show the, the difference there. Any questions about anything we've gone through so far? Um, relative to the site? I think, you know, hopefully one of the things, yeah, please. Uh, Chris, which screen reader are you using? Chris, what screen reader are you using? I'm using NVDA. Um, this is not the default voice. Uh, this is an add-on, but um, there, there are a variety of voices you can get for it. This is just my, my preference, but I'm using NVDA. It stands for Non-Visual Desktop Access. It was actually developed by uh, two Two friends, not my friends. I'm not that cool, but they're they're friends with each other. Uh, two blind folks from uh, Australia, and it's been around for. Oh, I, I want to say the better part of a, a almost two decades, I think. Yeah. If I can yeah, a long time. It's it's completely free and open source, and, and community driven, and it really, uh, in in many ways, is is on par with with commercial offerings with, with a few exceptions. I mean, I use this in, in my, my professional and my personal life pretty much full time. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, quick question. Well, I guess I kind of two parts. Like, if there's any good resources for the keyboard commands for, like, testing, because what I am struggling with is, like, the proper way to test myself. For yeah. Type is there, a, and we could pass this in kind of a presentation, but do you have a resource where people can get keyboard commands? Um, and for a screen reader? Yeah, um, there are some resources around. I'm happy to, uh, I'm happy to share some resources after, uh, to, to email some, some links out, Matt, if you want to. Yeah, if, we'll if pass them around. Disseminating that, that's, that's not a problem at all. But yeah. There, uh, I'm pretty sure every screen reader has, like, these kind of quick start guides, especially for, you know, even just folks who want to, Dip a few toes into the, to the accessibility waters, right? Yeah, I do jump think start their 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 testing and so on. Uh, any more questions while 
Chris is leading us to a bad example. <laughs> it's not a government website, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so for what, what we're dealing with with that, I work at GW, and so with the top nav links, like we've been given recommendations, like it's better to have the top navs, if you have a drop down, be clickable versus a hover, and I just didn't know if Chris had any. Yeah, so, um, so what you're talking about is like... Um, like if you hover over C topics, like when I'm testing it now, if, if I hover over it, the, the, like the secondary nav drops down. And just like if there's a preference for that experience. Well, it has to be keyboard operable, so it would have to be clickable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I guess, I could, yeah, because when I tap through, I, that's where it goes back to the question of like the proper way to test is like when I previewed it now, I just don't know if you're supposed to hit the down arrow with your keyboard or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, de it, you know? it kind of depends on the situation. So real quickly, before we go, um, Chris, the question comes up on C topics, which is in the main menu, um, and that's a drop down. It gives us a drop down arrow. Um, how do you invoke the the drop down? Um, for for most form controls, for most interactive elements, you can usually invoke them by pressing space or enter. Giving giving focus either with the arrow keys or with with tab. Generally speaking, you can go with them by, by pressing space or, or enter, and uh, sometimes they'll just, uh, they, they will expand on their own, or sometimes if, you, if it requires a different level of interactability, uh, uh, like, um, for example, combo boxes, things like that, you press enter and you enter into your, uh, you would engage the focus mode. So that you could, for example, arrow through the, the list of available items if, if that was the implementation. Yeah, do you want to just um, take us through what you're doing? It's not clickable, but it's not enough to make them clickable. Yes, there are ways to, to emulate mouse clicks using a screen reader and emulate mouse movement, but that really, really disenfranchises keyboard only users. Uh, folks who aren't using the screen reader don't have the underlying tech to. to to emulate mouse clicks, and it, it also yeah. can create a whole host of problems for folks who use voice recognition technology. So let's try. Uh, I think you're talking about this this item that says topics. Global banner landmark navigation see, landmark it search landmark search button. It's in the oh, nav bar. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yes. So that's a button. Oh. So I can press space. That was kind of like the other control before. Official website of the note. The, like that cool disclaimer that explains the .gov situation. So let's go and, and invoke this just real quickly. Global banner landmark navigation landmark C topics button collapsed. Again, I'm just navigating among the buttons using B and shift B. So let's press space here. Expanded. Expanded. Right. So. Heading level two enroll in health insurance. So now it's giving, you know, again, a, kind of a, a good semantic structure with headings. List with eight items link, create an account. Out of button expanded, see topics. Collapsed. Link get answers. Search landmark at link button collapsed, see topics. Expanded. Right, so, so easy, easy, easy. Answer, okay, that, uh, yeah. That answers the question. All right, let's go to our, who did you pick? Yeah. Let's There's... go to a more... Uh, I mean, let's, let's go to a bad example, but perhaps something pretty innocuous. I mean, perhaps mildly irritating or more than mildly irritating, but this is not, this, this wouldn't necessarily be a showstopper uh, with, with some caveats, and I'll explain it in a minute. HTTPS slash slash patches. Okay, so, so what I've done here uh, is I've pressed Alt-D to, to bring the address bar into focus and, and highlight it, and then I've I've got something on my clipboard, which I just pasted in here. Collab, so. banner, landmark. John Stamos, Matthew Perry convinced me. Okay, so let's, let's stop <laughs> here. I, I pressed control to silence my Zero speech. Second. It's, we so really it's went in the in other action. direction. Zero <laughs> it's an auto-playing video, but um, it's, it's an auto-playing video. It's, it's muted, Zero but 50. It's, it insists on One reading second to 53 the, the timestamp. So you've, you've got all these things, you're, you're trying to collect your thoughts, or you're trying to get an idea of the structure of the page. Uh, and, and of course, you're, you're kind of losing efficiency and things like that. So let's try to, I'm going to assume 
because uh, a lot of web browsers kind of based on that. You know, we, we like to try to intuitively kind of think of what the, this page structure might be based on what we know to be good practice or standard practice. So let's say the content that I want, the story is going to be at heading level one. So I'm going to press the number one on the top row here to, to move my focus there. Clickable main landmark, John Stamos. I nearly quit showbiz after embarrassing friends moment, but Matthew Perry changed my mind heading level one. Okay, so I was right, and there's not only is there a heading, but there's Zero a landmark. Oh gosh, it's doing that one again. One second um, So, you know, not only can you use headings, but you can use landmarks if, if that's the, your, your preferred way to, to navigate. Heading level one, my mind. I collapsed link Francesca Bacardi. Okay, just moving down again. Published docked. 31, 2023, 20, 12, application clickable video player. Okay, there's the embedded video player. Complimentary landmark heading level two moron. Heading level two link Matthew Perry. List with four items heading level three link friends directorship. Heading level three link Matthew. So it's just like, please, please read our things. We have more things that we wrote. Please read our things. We haven't even gotten to the main story yet uh, because the embedded player and because all these other kind of recommendations. I mean, this is pretty, pretty, uh, Pretty innocuous, pretty inoffensive. I mean, but you know, it could be ads. And if you've got like you know, four or five or six or seven frames of, of ads, of it, it can be really. That's that's when it can become a showstopper. Yeah, Chris, do you want to go uh, through I'm the going form? To Chris? Silence my speech so we can uh, not be harassed by this. Speech mode off. Uh, do we have any questions? Do you want to go to a form because we have about ten minutes? Um, in the session left, so I wanna I wanna show what like some poor implementations of like interactive forms look like. Yeah, let's let's do that. Um, speech mode beeps. Speech mode talk. Let's let's see. Uh, we can demonstrate what, what might be a showstopper. Navigation tool dot. Yeah, because the thing about the, the thing about inaccessibility when when it's a showstopper that's turning zero seconds of one minute zero that's, of one, that's turning zero away a customer one. and that's it's, it's not a threat it's not like a you know do this thing for the feel of goods it literally can make something uh, a transaction impossible for someone to to conduct so ah, this is a collapsed. bus company uh that they did go from New York to the general DMV area. I used to take the best, bu best bus. Lucky. <clears throat> so um, again, we can make a few assumptions about a page and, and and the way it's coded and with the information we have. So let's attempt to book a ticket. Okay. So I'm going to uh, actually. I just want to see if there's any kind of. Dialogues that might be obscuring anything. So let check real Clickable quick. graphic chat now. Live chat chat with chat now. Out of frame link, I agree. Both on this web link, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Why not? <laughs> make sure that's not. Uh, Live chat chat with chat now. Out of frame content info landmark. All right, link. let's go back to the top. Uh, so let's attempt to buy a ticket. Banner landmark graphic clickable. Should be, a, should be a quick endeavor. Traffic clickable travel with the best. Allegedly. We'll do the rest. Travel with the best. Blank clickable list with two items. Sign up. Sign in. Blank. Out of list button. Buy a ticket. Click sign up. Oh, by the way, uh, I, I want to point out that sign up and sign in are just text. They they don't convey any information. I mean, they're not just text, right? But for, for, for all intents and purposes, they don't convey anything useful about the function. For for all I know, that could have been just some text that says sign up or sign in. I don't, I don't explicitly know unless I assume and, and guess that the, these inter, these these elements are, are are kind of actionable. Right. So that that's that's a pitfall again. Minor, you know, if if you're kind of intuitive. Again, not everybody should be expected to be an advanced screen reader user. I am somewhat advanced. I, am I the most advanced? Unequivocally, no. Sign in. Blank. Out of list button. Buy a ticket. Link stop location. Uh, buy, button okay. buy a ticket. Buy a ticket. That's a button. Let's let's press it. Why not? Clickable list with two items. Out of list button. Buy a ticket. Doesn't really do anything. Link There's stop locations. At least nothing obvious. So let's just proceed. Link rewards. Link reserve. Link prime bus. Link up eight. Let call us. Link data complimentary landmark. Let's find somewhere we can buy a ticket. Clickable edit red only one seat. Okay. Um, Gosh. Okay. So, so right now we're at 
the you know basically the number of passengers we're in a form it says edit read only one seat um given the information that i have how do we interact with this because it's an edit field it's telling me that it's it's it's, it's a text field which is misleading um and it's telling me that it's read only so that we can't really alter it can we um and i don't know let's press enter to to interact with this let's go into focus mode I think for, I just real quickly, I think hopefully for a lot of you, this is the first time you're seeing what a person with a screen reader goes through. You realize how important it is for developers to mark up their page as well, right? Yeah. Every little step that, you know, Chris is going through is like an impediment in the way that he continues because he's skilled at using a screen reader and kind of understands how to navigate beyond bad coding, right? Uh, still use. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so, so, so two things. Um, one is that, just, just as a matter of disclosure, right? I used to take this bus, I used to use this bus carrier. Um, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be able to book a ticket here. Uh, I used to be able to. I've since forgotten exactly how to do it. And it's not because, um, it's not only because I don't know, I've, I've forgotten how to circumvent a lot of these kind of pitfalls. So we, we, it's it's useful to look at these things at scale, right? You have one or two little pitfalls and you kind of get around them, that's fine. But like, when, when you look at it, you know, uh, 10 or 15 on a page, and then you have, I don't know, gosh, 30, 40 other pages to, to frequent to conduct your business, it's it's a problem. So we're in this... Um, but the other thing was that the, the the previous page that we were looking at the the page six that had that video player i i would have entertained testing it on the mac but i have um i have this macbook from from 2020 and it, i was literally afraid that it would take the entire system down um <laughs> i've i've opened similar busy pages with with players and stuff like that that auto play and there, there's lots of traffic and ads and it makes the screen editor pretty much grind to a halt yeah. and you can't really do anything it just says busy chris while you're going yeah. through that we have about five minutes left in today's session are there questions mm -hmm. from anybody as we go through this no okay yes so for those like videos that auto play is the um x like button not focusable or would it just take a lot of to get over to yeah, it's one, I think, you know, videos auto playing affects a lot of people, not just obviously the kind of the issue of being able to close it for a person using a screen reader. If you have sensory uh, disability, it's obviously the same kind of concept. So it's a, actually a WCAG violation to have auto play on your site. Um, so it's more than just being able to close it. Um, there actually should also be kind of universal ways to pause video globally within a site, um, according to WCAG. Um, so, you know, autoplay in general is just a bad thing. Great question. So, go ahead, Chris. So, let's just go through this form really quickly. So, now I'm in this edit field, right? It says read only, it says one. Let's say I want to book for multiple passengers. So now I can assume, well, okay, maybe up arrow. Uh, maybe it'll do something. It's, I mean, it's, I, I don't have any kind of explicit information that it will. So let's try. Maybe up arrow increases the number of passengers. And it's focused red only one seat. One seat, one seat, one seat. No, let's try down. Two seats. Okay, great. So let's tab over. Select your departure location. Edit red only selected departure pickup. So these are all read only edit fields. Uh, at least incorrectly, they're, they're, they're marked up. These should, can and should be drop downs of some sort. Pet station, yeah. select okay. and remove. Pet station, okay, that's good. Let's... Select drop off dot dot edit red only selected loading Manassas. Sprint field. Let's, let's imagine I want to see my parents. Uh, that's, that's cool. Um, select drop off dot dot edit focused red only sprint field. So I can't. Clickable link less less. Yeah, so I wasn't able to tab through for, for a little bit. Um, now I'm at this link that says clickable less less. Um, just based on experience, I know that this is a calendar, a date picker, uh, but there really isn't any useful context uh, in, in terms of what this actually is or does. Yeah. Link. 
Uh, you know, Chris, Lit. hang on one second. We have a time. I'm going to get to a yeah. link that picks the date. Table clickable with seven rows and seven columns. Row two, TH column five, two, link. FR column six, three, link. Okay, Friday, why not? Uh, and let's press space on here. Sock column seven, link, row, row column two, link six. Now, there's no facility where you can enter the date manually either, so that's that's a huge lack of efficiency. Let's get out of this table. Departure, Nov 03, 2023. Okay. Return. Realize also it didn't it didn't tell me until now that I was selecting the departure date. Um, you can guess again. Clickable, select your return, pick up location, and it read only sprint field. Okay, looks good. Button. Blank. There's an unlabeled button, don't know what it does. Clickable, select drop off dot dot edit red only pen station. Okay, good. Button. Blank. Clickable link. Uh, link. I guess, see there's some unlabeled link. links. Link. November 2020. Okay, so another calendar view, another day picker. So let's select something arbitrary. Tape, so column yeah. seven, four, link. Hey, Chris, three, two, column Chris, one, real five, quickly. Link. So we're, we're kind of at time. I'm happy to yeah. continue on if you guys want to, but obviously, you know, we are at 12. I do want to, before, you know, anybody else has to go, you know, I just want to close on a, on a parting note, which is, you know, hopefully you start to see today that, you know, the context of this is, that as we start to build for accessibility, you know, we're really kind of offering accessibility for everyone. So I always like to end with a concept of, if you've ever used Pinch or Zoom, say I. A little louder, come on. If you've ever used Pinch, right. If you've ever said, hey, Siri, hi. If you've ever uh, used, you know, GPS. Hi. See, so we all use it. Uh, accessible technology and really accessibility is for everyone and so um, as you st as we start to build you know for more accessibility you know and really do make them the best bus company um, you know um, uh, you know I hope you'll 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 leave with that uh, I'm happy if you want we can continue to go through this form till they kick us out but I don't want to obviously interrupt with anyone else's session but really thank you everyone for, for uh, coming here today